Let's talk a little bit about consciousness, energy, light, and the cerebral spinal fluid. Now, our cerebral spinal fluid is completely bathing our brain, our central nervous system, those nerves that leave the brain and travel down our spinal cord. It's going all the way down to our sacrum, circulating from our sacrum up into the ventricles of the brain, the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle that is right by the pineal gland, right in that third eye chakra area that so many ancient indigenous cultures speak about, completely bathing that pineal gland and that fourth ventricle coming down towards the brain stem. That cerebral spinal fluid is carrying chemicals. It's carrying ions. It is informing our biology just by the flow of that, mirroring some of the ideas of cranial sacral therapy, right? This flow of cerebral spinal fluid, just that is really initiating and stimulating a response in the mechanoreceptors that are lining the area where cerebral spinal fluid is circulating. Now, there's some researchers out there that propose that the brain, the neurons of the brain, are communicating with biophotons. Biophotons are very weak, ultraviolet light that are emitted by different biological processes from our DNA, from our mitochondria. Every time our mitochondria is creating ATP, it creates reactive oxygen species and it creates light emission. It was Albert Fritz Pop who first pioneered this idea of biophotons being used for communication. He found that they weren't random at all. They act in a coherent manner, implying a communication of sorts, a language of light happening throughout the body. And there are many researchers who are looking at this in our neurological function, in our brain. There are some out there that are looking at how biophotons might be the source of consciousness in the brain, how they really explain consciousness and extrasensory perception, ESP, the ability to communicate non-locally via this light. And we know that these neurons are bathed in that easy structured water that acts as a bridge for frequency information, especially light and ultraviolet light. So we have this system circulating from the base of our spine, from our sacrum, all the way up to our ventricles in the brain, completely bathing the central nervous system with nutrients, with information of flow, and they're also photoreceptors. What are photoreceptors doing in the system if light isn't being used? And like I said, there are many out there that are postulating that biophotons and their emission from our neurons are creating a communication network that is intimately tied with consciousness, with the idea of quantum consciousness, where consciousness isn't local to the activity of the neurons of the brain. Rather, it's connected to this universal field this quantum field of information that connects all life in the universe. And our consciousness is entangled with that universal consciousness. Biophotons being able to act as quantum particles. We know that photons can quantum entangle. They can superimpose and take multiple paths at one time. They can tunnel through obstacles of temperature, of distance. It absolutely paints a fascinating picture where our brain is communicating not only in chemical processes like we learned in school, but this language of frequency, this language of vibration and oscillation, where there is a mechanical vibration happening, a resonant frequency that is allowing for communication, not to mention this incredible system of biophotonic information and communication that some researchers are proposing as the basis for consciousness, for extrasensory perception, like telepathy. There are so many different possibilities with this idea of consciousness, and it's really hard to disprove. We don't have the instrumentation to really measure and disprove these ideas, but it really brings us full circle back to some of these ideas that the ancients always spoke of. And that's one of the things I love about quantum biology. 
astrology. This idea that what science really pushed aside in the scientific revolution, we now do have the instrumentation to bring validation to this idea of some of the more esoteric things in healing, energy flows throughout the body, our meridian systems, our kundalini energy flow, consciousness being part of a akashic field or a universal field. And the cerebral spinal fluid has been proposed as a way to communicate this throughout the body. I find this absolutely fascinating. I hope that there is more funding and more research in this area because this is starting to paint an incredibly sophisticated yet intuitive picture that many of us have experienced that idea of oneness, that idea of individual existence happening in the context of a tapestry of energy that flows throughout this universe. If you like this information, stay tuned for more.